How's everybody doing today? I'm a little stressed, but other than that, I'm doing all right. <laughs> well, if you're new here, my name is Jim. I'm lead pastor here, and today we're actually kicking off a new series called Margin. And so today we're just going to be looking at, it's kind of a kickoff for the series, and basically our tagline, it's right up there, is just lo- living within the limits, all right? Just learning to live within the limits. Now, I just want to start off with a couple pictures. We've got a little crayon picture up here. We'll just put it up here. And I don't know about you, but as a parent, you know, when my kids were little, one of the early goals for them, you know, after they walk and, you know, and start learning how to hold something in their hand is to try to get them to learn to color in coloring books, right? So many of you remember that. Can, can any of you remember when you actually were coloring in a coloring book when you were little? It's hard to remember back there for some of you remember. Okay, so, so the goal is when, you, when you're raising a kid is you want them to color within the lines, all right, especially, how many of you have ever had your kids enter into a coloring book contest or coloring contest? You know, like some of the restaurants used to have them, you remember that? And they'd pin them up on, on a string, you know, and you, you could win something, you know, and you're just like, you want your kid to be the best. So how many of you cheated? Come on. You know, you're like holding your kid's hand, you know, and you're just like, all right, you're doing good. You're, doing good. you're not doing good. You're doing it for them. You know, and oftentimes it would look at like that and you're like, ugh. You know, because every one of us, our kids are the perfect child, right? And we want our kids to be the perfect child, and we want them to color within the line. So it looks like that when it's done, right? And we're like, yeah, that's my kid. That's right there. That's mine. My kid is perfect and makes it in the lines every time. But the reality is, is that what we do as adults is we try to teach our kids to color within the lines, and yet the way we live our life looks more like the first drawing. Because we constantly live outside the lines. We constantly live outside the limits that we have in this life. And so we tell our kids, you know, you got to color. You know, we're trying to teach them the foundational things of life. And yet we live a life that looks more like that. Constantly pushing the limits throughout our life. And so our kids get really confused. That's why all my kids are confused. All right? It's because we, we tell them one thing. We try to show them one thing. And then we completely are just saturated with all these things that just overload us and load us down. Now, what are those things that just constantly make us color outside the lines? Well, we got activities. All right? Especially if you've got little kids. You know, it's like, and even as they get older, even when they're in college, you know, it's like activities. All these things we're running to back and forth. Then we got all these choices. You know, it's like, it's like I remember one year when my in-laws lived up in Wisconsin. We were talking about this just the other day. And, and there's all these dairy farms up there, right? And, and we went to this one huge grocery store. And, and there's this, this, this big thing of ice cream. I mean, it was, like, it was like a country mile long. And there was like 500 brands of ice cream. I mean, it's like only in America can you choose between 500 brands of ice cream. And it's just, it's overwhelming. And you get stressed out and you start crying because it's too many choices, <laughs> right? And then you're like, you try to ask some of the locals, which one's the best one? Which one? You know what I'm talking about. We have so many choices just, and just constantly pulling us. And then there's change that takes place. Why do we have to experience change? Why can't everything just stay the same, right? So we got, we got change that takes place. Then we got work, you know, and, and work. And we get overloaded in work. And then we got information, and we live in an information age where we're just constantly bombarded and overloaded with information. Now, here's a good test when you know that you've got way too much information and we're on information overload. When you grab your phone, especially an iPhone, and you look at down there where that little email icon is, and you see a number. All right? Now, how many have got over 5,000 unread emails? Let's, let's, let's just see what we got here. All right, how many of you got over 10,000 unread emails? I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of humbling, isn't it? You sit there and you look at it and it's like, oh my gosh, I think I got like 8,000 something unread emails and they're all yours. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> they're, they're not yours. I mean, I think I've got three email accounts that I, that I track and I'm sure we're all like this and I'm sure the companies don't never think this way, but it's like my Yahoo account is my junk email. <laughs> you know, that's my junk email. How many of you do that? You have one email account, there's your junk email. So every time you sign up for something and you have some subscription, you know, they want your email, you put your junk email on there. So you never go there and look at anything, right? It just keeps adding up and the numbers just keep rolling up. And then I've got, you know, my Gmail account, which is the one I check primarily. And then they got the church's email account that I check on a regular basis, you know? So, so it's like this is information overload. And even on those emails, there's stuff that comes in, you know, at the church, we buy something from a company and there's like a promotion, you know, trying to sell us something. It's like, oh my gosh, how much information can I take in in one week? I don't know how some of you have time to post on social media. I just don't. It, it, it's, it's just, there's just so much that's there in front of us. And then we've got debt, 
Because we're a culture that just loves to just swipe, 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 you know? And they start putting all the fun commercials on, you know, as it gets closer to the holidays. Just swipe away, you know? And now how many of you get those, those spam phone calls? You know, your credit card. You know, you, you know, it's like I keep telling my wife, I am not wanting to talk to this gal Lucy, but she keeps calling me over and over again. I don't care that I can get interest rate, lower interest rate. I'm pay off my credit card bill. I don't want you. Beep. Right? But they call like every week and it's like, what? and then now they're putting local numbers on them, right? So you think it's a local call and it's not. You know, they're from somewhere else. And so there's like all this crazy stuff. So we go in debt. Then we got accessibility. Everybody wants our time, right? The kids want our time. Our neighbors want our time. Our friends want our time. You know, it's like, so it's like, wow. You know, we're just constantly being pulled and stressed. We got accessibility. Then we got worries, all these crazy things. You know, we decided to have four kids. I don't know why, because there's more stress, right? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I'm, I love my four kids, all right? But we have worries. And then there's the pace of life. You know, we, we live in just an incredible age of technology, and I remember when, when I worked down at IU as an audio engineer and I was setting up all these workstations for the students that the technology began to change. Because when I went to school, we did magnetic recording. You know, the year of cassettes. How many remember cassettes? You know, and you remember the old LPs when you pop them in, you know, you had that nice, beautiful sound. And we just loved it. It's like, oh, come Lord Jesus, you know. And, and then today it sounds like this. Hello, are you there? <laughs> right? It, it, there's like nothing there, you know, but we, there was magnetic recording and then we switched over to digital and they swore, they promised us like you, what, you will save so much time with, with digital technology because now you can go in, you don't have to roll the tape forward and find that little space and mark it with a grease pencil and take a razor blade and splice it and put a piece of tape on it and you're done. No, you can, it's just like a word processor. You can just go right in and click on any spot you want and it does it for you. But you can also change the level. You can also change the equalization. You can also add some reverb and effects and all these other things. And it takes twice as long now with digital technology than it did with analog. It doesn't make anything easier. And now we carry around our phones. They used to be attached to a wall. We'd walk away from them and never think about them. Now we think about them all the time, right? I mean, we, are, we, we have no margin in our life. And so we come to this, this place in life where we're chronically rushed and pushed to the limits. We're chronically late, chronically tired, and we live like Job here. This is what it says in Job 3.26. It says, I have no peace, I have no quiet, I have no rest, and trouble keeps coming. That's my new mission statement for my life. <laughs> it's like, seriously, how much is enough? I, I just have no peace, no quiet, no rest. It's like I, I'm just constantly have to be connected. And, and it's just crazy. So what is this whole thing about margin? All right, this is going to be a very practical series. And what I'm going over today is just very practical. Because I, I, I just know that we all constantly push the limits. It's easy to do. All right, so this is what margin is. All right, just kind of give you some couple working definitions. One, margin is the space between my load and my limits. All right, it's the space between my load and my limits. Now, how many of you remember an ancient artifact that looks something like this? Anybody recognize this? I'm sure there's some of us out there that recognize this ancient artifact. You know, when I was in college, this is what we had to write on. You know, they had these little blue books. It was like half this size. We had to write. We didn't type. We had to write, you know. And then they started introducing computers. That's how old I am, you know. Then they started introducing computers, and, you know, Microsoft was just a dream. It wasn't even around yet. Apple was a dream. It wasn't even around yet. And then they started coming out with them, the latter part of my, my college career. But, but we had these pieces of paper, and what did they teach you? You know, there's a red line there for why? A margin. So you didn't write over here so when you put it in a notebook. It didn't look all sloppy. And then they were always taught there's a line on the back to try to keep it within this line. And we didn't put one on this side, but you could kind of see through it, you know, and just kind of leave some space in there. And they taught us, those that were writing, but now we turn on our computers, we got word processors, it does it for us. And most people when they're typing don't even think about the margin because they're already set for us, right? I mean, most people don't even think about it. And so we don't even think about margin in most of our lives. We just go, 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 like as if we're, we're the Energizer Bunny and we can just keep going and going. So creating margin just gives breathing space. It just will help every area of your life. Let me give you another little just definition here, what it means to live with margin. Living with margin is this. It's not using up all that I have, but reserving some of my time, my energy, and resources for the unexpected. 
All right, we're going to come back to that here in just a moment. So it's just leaving some reserve. All right, now how many of you were late to church this morning? All right, nobody's going to raise their hand. All right, it's like, you know, and I know there's all kinds of reasons why, you know, and it's just one of those indicators that, that you know, we don't live oftentimes with margin because there's always crazy things that happen. But this is what God's word tells us, okay? In Exodus 23, God's actually coming back And through the law, through Moses, he's saying, okay, I'm going to restate something that I said in the very beginning in Genesis 2. All right? I work six days, and I set apart the seventh day as a day of rest. All right? So he brings it back in the law through Moses. He said, all right, this is what I want you to tell the people. For six days you are to do your work, but on the seventh day you must cease. All right, in order that your ox and your donkey may rest and that your female servant's son and any hired help may refresh themselves. Now, how many of you have oxes and donkeys? <laughs> Does anybody have an ox and an ox? See, this Bible, this doesn't even apply to us. Forget this. <laughs> That's kind of what we would think, right? I mean, probably nobody here has female, you know, servants or, you know, in, in their homes, you know. But, but what it's saying here is that you got to give those, if you're an employer and you got people that work under you, you got to give them downtime. We just can't keep going and going and going. Our animals, you know, back in, in the day, they just can't keep going. I know some of your farmers, Darby, your farmer, he's like, you know, you just can't drive and drive and drive. You know, you, you'll kill your animals. I says, I set it apart for a reason so that you have rest, so that those around you can rest. As parents, we often have to tell our kids, go take a break. Why? You know, they're just wound up, you know, because I need a break. (laughs) And so we lock them in the bathroom or something, right? No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) So we have to learn to live within margin. So just going to look here, what are the benefits of living with margin? Just a couple quick benefits, and we're getting to the other part here. Just the benefits of living with margin. Got a list of them up here. One of them is just peace of mind. When we build in margin... All right, just that extra little space there between our load and our limits, it just gives us just peace of mind. We're not stressed out. We're not worn out. We can actually relax. We can relax our thoughts, all right? And you'll have a healthier body and a healthier life when you build margin in. And and I know some of you are just not wired that way. You just like to go, 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 go. And and you're constantly late and you're constantly worn out. You, You know, it's like we live here in Indianapolis where there's the Indianapolis 500 race right? Or the brickyard, all right? Now you got these high performance cars, all right? They can go like 200 plus miles an hour. And oftentimes we think, well, look, we live in a high performance day and I'm a high performance, I'm working out, I'm feeling good. I I just have a high performance body. Do you know that those cars don't start and just keep going the whole time until the race is over? They have to stop every once in a while for a pit stop. Why? Because their tires wear out. And they got to swap some tires. They run out of fuel. You remember some of the races where some of the, the guys, they, they took a risk, all right? And they're like, I think I can make it. I think I can make it. And then it's like, they're like, they were in the lead. And they get to that last lap. And it's like, <laughs> and they're just like, ah, oh, I should have stopped. I should have stopped. You know, and, and it's how we live our lives. As if we're this car that can go 200 miles an hour. And we say, you know what? I don't care about the pit stops. We're wearing, out, wearing ourselves out, our tires. We're, we're, we need refueled. And we just keep going and going. So it gives us a healthier body and life. And, it, and your relationships are healthier. You just have healthier relationships when you have margin. Studies show that families without margin have more conflict. Families without margin have more conflict conflict. They're constantly on the go. And they're stressing themselves out. They're stressing their kids out. And so it's so important that we figure out how we get margin into our lives so we can have healthier relationships. And then another one is we just wrapped up this last series called Radical is that you are more available for God to use for the purposes of his kingdom. Because we purposely build it in. We build in this extra time. We build in this margin into our lives. All right, so we're just going to look at today just kind of this practical thing, just some steps on how to live our lives with margin because we all need it. We all need to just take a deep breath. Let's all do this together. Let's all take a deep breath together. <sighs> didn't that feel good? All right, now you can take a nap. <laughs> all right, just steps to living with margin. First thing, number one, is just simply this. You need to know that you have limitations and know your limitations. And oftentimes we don't think about it that way. We don't don't recognize sometimes that we have these these limitations and we just go and go and go. 
Now, I remember as a kid, and some of you that are my age or older can remember this, you know, in the early years of TV, you know, it went from black and white to color. You know, I remember some of the early superhero shows. I, I remember, you remember the old black and white Superman that came out? You guys remember that? I mean, the guy wasn't even buff, <laughs> right? I mean, he was just an average guy, you know? And, and he wasn't even that buff, you know? But, and it was like, and my kids, it's like whenever I put on some of those old shows, they're like, man, TV was so slow back, back you know, so slow back then, because it does, you know? But, but this guy was invincible, you know? He, he could leap, you know, tall buildings, you know? He had this theme song going on. And then they came out with Batman and Robin. You remember Batman and Robin? You know? Pow, right? And it was all this slow motion. And they'd always get in a bind, but somehow they always got out of it. Always got out of it. So as a kid, as a little boy, you know, what I'm thinking is like someday I want to grow up and I want to be a superhero. I want to be invincible. I, I just have no limitations. I can just do whatever, like the man of steel, and, and I can just bust through stuff. You know, even if they put kryptonite on me, somehow something's going to happen. I'm going to get out of it. I am just unstoppable. And as a little boy, you start thinking, that's what I'm going to be like, and you know, when I'm a man, and we just go and go and go. And in the movies, in the TV, you know, their, their limitations just seem to never come. But we have limitations, and we have to know that. This is what Paul writes in the book of Romans. And he's given an illustration here. He's talking about sin and the effect of sin on us. And this is what he writes in Romans 6. He says, you've been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. Now he's trying to explain this. Like once you were slaves to sin, all right, and now you're, you're slaves to righteousness. And it's like, it's not, it's not really that way. But he says this, verse 19, he says, I'm using this as an example from everyday life because of what? Your human limitations, and what he's saying here is like, we, we can't grasp every nuance of God and, and who he is. There's just some things that are beyond us. So I'm just trying to give an example is what he's saying, that you have human limitations in grasping some stuff. So as you were a slave to sin, now you're a slave to, to righteousness, but you're not really a slave to it. But I want you to think along this way because you have human limitations, all right? And so it's important to know. God's word says, look, we have human limitations, whether we realize it or not. We have physical limitations, and I know some of you guys work out on a regular basis and some of you are really strong, but the reality is you cannot carry 10 of us guys at one time, right? I mean, you don't have enough hands, you don't have enough arms, all right? Some of you may be a really good swimmer, but no human being can jump in the ocean in California and swim straight to Hawaii, all right? Why? Because we just have built-in human limitations. We have physical limitations of what we can do, and yet sometimes we live as though we don't have them. And so we just constantly are on the go. We have emotional limitations. Not only can we not carry 10 people physically, sometimes we can't even carry 10 people emotionally. Sometimes we go through these seasons where things are really hard and we got, we got all this stuff and we've got to build in some margin so we can get refreshed. We can get restored. We can get healed. Instead of just going and going and going like a, like a buzzsaw, we have physical limitations. We have emotional limitations. We have time limitations. And some of us, you know, we, we think we're so bright, we burn the candle on both ends. We just burn ourselves out, right? But we have time limitations. This is what um, it says in Job. Going back to Job, chapter 14. It says, our time is limited. You, referring to God, have given us only so many months to live and have set limits we cannot go beyond. All right, so the reality is, is that God's word says that each one of us are given in a lot of time. We have time limitations. We got one life to live. And God's entrusted with us the mission of his kingdom. He's trusted us the good news of Christ. And we've got a responsibility of what to do with this as well as working out our earthly lives and doing our jobs. But there's time limitations in doing all that and trying to compound all this stuff with our kids and, and being married and, and all these activities and running from one thing to the next. It's just like, man, something's got to give at some point in time because we have time limitations. And, and some of us, we just go and go and go to where our cell phones can't even keep up with us. Right? I mean, how do you have to plug in your cell phone halfway through the day? Because you just wore that thing out. Right? And, and so, so but you're still on the go. And so you plug it in. And it's like you go back to the old days. And you stay tethered. You know? And you're just like, because you got it plugged into the wall. Right? And our cell phones sometimes can't even keep up with us because we think we can just go and go and go. Now, what happens when we ignore the limitations that God purposely has given us? What happens? Well, there's all kinds, just like on a, on a car, there's all kinds of warning lights that start going off, all right? So we have built-in warning lights that God gives us. 
and references them throughout Scripture. One of those warning lights is pain. All right, pain is a warning light. Those of you that, that work out, you know, it's like I got this pain in my, my shoulder right here because I've been, I, family church, I gave me this exercise machine and I've been using it. It's been really helping my shoulder a lot. I was kind of all messed up and now I, I got free range because I've been using this thing, but now I got this pain. It's like, gosh, it's rough turning in my, being in my 50s. It's like, goodness, I tried to stay healthy and I just killed myself, you know, but, but it's like, so there's pain, you know, the, the, and so it's pain. It's just a built-in warning like saying, look, you're overdoing it. You need to just back off a little bit. Slow down a little bit. Stress is a warning light. And some of us are just stressed out because there's just so much piling up and piling up. Fatigue is a warning light. Do you know that they, they, they say that studies are, you know, 100 years ago, people slept more than we do today. The work week was less 100 years ago than it is today. And now it's, it's any given. I mean, I've, I've heard stories where somebody say, yeah, I got a promotion at work. It's like, really? It's, yeah, pay raise and everything. I, I got to work extra hours. You know what I'm sitting there looking? It's like, okay, you went in at, at 7 o'clock and you got home at 5, but now you don't get home until 7? That's a pay raise? That's a bonus? You're just making minimum wage. <laughs> I mean, it almost feels that way. It's like you're working that much more. All right? And, and so we're fatigued because we got to work and work and work. And then what happens? Another warning light, we get, ir- we get irritable. This irritability thing just kicks in. Now, how many of you get irritable? You know, I used to wake up grumpy all the time, but I just let her sleep in now. But anyway, that's an old bad one. Sorry. Had to, had to use it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> oh, she's giving me that look. I better walk off stage. <laughs> so we get irritable. And then when we get irritable, then anger is like the next phase that kicks in. Now, all of a sudden, we're angry. And really, it has nothing to do with what's going on right in the moment. It's all this other stuff. It's been pent up, building up. We haven't built in margin. We haven't got refreshed. Now we go from pain, stress, fatigue, irritability, anger, and then it turns to apathy. And now we get to this place where we don't even care. We don't even just care anymore. And these are all built in warning lights. And it's like the enemy just robs us. Scripture says the joy of the Lord is to be our strength. And the joy has just gone out the door. So there's loss of enthusiasm and joy. Because we just burned ourselves out and wore ourselves out running from one, you know, as soon as we get up till, till the moment we go to bed. And I know that every season is, has its challenges. And especially when you got little kids. And so it's so important that we got to learn to build in margin. We have physical human limitations. Second thing, number two, is when we understand we have limitations, then we got to figure out what it is that drives us past our limits. Because I'm telling you, it's so easy to get pulled in. What is it that's going to continually drive me past my limits? Now, some of you in this room are retired. And some of you can't even relax in your retirement. (laughs) I mean, you just got to go. You just got to keep filling your schedule and go, 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 go. All right? And and it's just easy to do. Now, there's nothing wrong with being on the go because I I don't want to stop when I'm retired someday. You know, I don't want to stop. I mean, actually, there's nothing in the Bible that even talks about retirement. We're on this mission till the, our last breath, all right? Now, we may retire from a job, but we're not ever retired from the mission of the kingdom. But it's just so easy to get caught up in this culture of go and go and going and being driven and trying to fill. And, and I even hear people quoting scripture, you know, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And we just go and we go and go. You know, the Bible says make the most of every opportunity. And so we go and go and go. And we take those verses way out of context. In disregard, God says, look, I built in rest for a reason. You have limitations and you need to know what it is that continually pulls you to go past your limits. So we stop and evaluate. This is what Solomon writes in Ecclesiastes. This is a great passage of scripture. All right. He's given examples here. He says, for example, he says, some people don't have friends or family. Why? It says, but they are never satisfied with what they own and they never stop working to get more. That sounds just like us, doesn't it? Never satisfied, just keep working to get more. Um, Never satisfied with their own. They never stop working to get more. They should ask themselves, why am I always working to have more? Who will get what I leave behind? That's the worst part for me. (laughs) I mean, I'm serious. I've done so many funerals and I've been around families. And it's like, I tell you, where there's a will, there's a family member. And it's like you see just wars break out over, over the craziest things that really don't matter in life. 
And we live this life and we're just wearing ourselves out. We're stressed out and we think, well, who's going to get what I have left behind? And then Solomon just says, what a senseless and miserable life to live that way. Just constantly on the go just so I can have more. It would be better off. I love, I didn't put it in the scripture, in the notes, but I just, there's one proverb that says, it's like, God, just give me, don't give me too much and don't give me too little. Because if I have too much, then I'll just, I'll just be caught up in all my things and they'll pull my heart away from you. But if I have too little, I'll end up bitter and I'll, and I'll resent you. But give me just enough for every day. All right, and I think it's just so easy in our culture just to, be, to buy into having, 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 having. And so we don't leave any margin in our life. We're going to make sure that our kid gets every possible experience they can in their life or they'll turn out a mess. All right, so we go, 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 go. And what we do is we model for them something that God did not model for us. All right, and we're going to look at that here and, and just throughout the, this series as well as this morning. So it's good to stop and evaluate. You know, and in this particular thing, Solomon's saying, look, it's just easy to be selfish. I just think if I just work a little bit more and a little bit harder, I can just have more things that'll make me satisfied. And I don't know about you, but it's like, it's like every time I get something new, it's like that newness is gone. It's like I just had to have it. And now that you got it, it's like, eh, you know, it's just another thing. Another thing that I got to worry about getting scratched or broken, <laughs> right? Don't touch, don't touch it, right? And I know we got to keep our kids away from it, right? One more thing to worry about and stress us out. There's nothing wrong with having good things. Like I said, there's nothing wrong with having things. It's just when things have us. And that's what Solomon is referring to. All right, third thing when it comes to building margin is expect the unexpected. I mean, you've heard me talk about this before. None of us are exempt from the unexpected, right? It's like one of those things you've heard me say that whenever we're in a hurry, you know, what are the odds of getting behind the slowest driver in Indiana? <laughs> Right? And I don't know about you, but you know, my wife's like, will you just settle down? I'm like, <laughs> you know, and, and why am I stressed out? Because we didn't build margin in. Right? We didn't build margin in. And, and so some of you, you know, you get into the one of the worst arguments on the way to church because you didn't put margin in your life. My makeup bros broke, <laughs> the blow dryer's not working. You know, I mean, I woke up one year, years back, when I was, we were kind of a new church, you know, not, not our church, another one years back when I was first in ministry. Easter Sunday morning, half the sound equipment was mine. It was stored in my basement, my keyboard, my soundboard, all this stuff. And I go down in my basement. We just bought this house in January, all right? Easter Sunday, I get up early to lug all this equipment. And when I go down in the basement, I've got two inches of water in my basement. I don't have time to think about it. I've got to load up my car and go and pray that it did not get into any of my equipment, which it didn't. And sometimes, you know, but the good thing was I got up early because I've just learned through the years that sometimes you walk into something and things are differently than how you expected them to be. And we've got to build in. This whole year for me has just been a year of unexpected things. I mean, just, just at the end of the year, or maybe it was the beginning of the year, my, my water softener quit working. So I had to get a new water softener, all right? Then just a couple weeks ago, the last month when we had all that rain, my roof was leaking, all right? My daughter is in the back room, my son's room, who's gone. Nobody's in that room, all right? And he's in the back, she's in the back room. She decided to go up there where it was quiet and study, and she sends me a text. We're in the same house, all right? <laughs> you, you know it's time to downsize, right? And she sends me a text, you know? And, and she says, Dad, there's water dripping out of the light fixture in the ceiling, and I'm like, no, you know, and I'm running, I'm trying to find a bucket and I got to go grab the ladder and go up in the attic and I'm just like stressed out. It's like, why me? And us men, we turn into gorilla animals or something crazy, right? And so finally, you know, I had a friend of mine come over and we just, just cause the expanding, you know, the heat, my roof's not even that old. All right, it was redone like five years ago. Just heat and expansion to put one of the little joists, the little um, whole things that holds the boards together, just poked itself through. 
You know, so get up there. Get, I hate him get up there. I'm a chicken. But he got up there and he, he repaired it, you know. And then my, my garbage disposal could work. And all right, my sump pump, I got to get it replaced. Like I had to replace a piece on it, all right. And, and then so I'm trying to keep my basement from flooding. And when I'm down there checking it, there's water leaking into my basement in the other corner. It's like, what on earth is going on? So I run upstairs. The garbage disposal is leaking. I'm like, seriously, God, what else? And then last week, seriously, I went and bought six 12-foot deck boards to replace some rotted deck boards on my deck. I pulled them up only to find out all the joists are black rotted. It's only like eight years old. And my, my upper deck that's like 14 years old has perfect boards on it. And I'm like, ah. So now I'm the whole thing ripping out. So we have to understand it in life to expect the unexpected because it always comes. It always comes. And we got to learn to build margin into our life. This is what Jesus says, John 16, 33. I don't know why he said this. In this world, you will have what? <laughs> you will have trouble. <laughs> Thanks, God. <laughs> but he goes on. I don't have this on here, but he says, but take heart because I have overcome the world. And if we stay focused on this world and the things of this world where there is trouble, where things do break down, things leak, things break you know, we'll just be all of a troubled life. But Jesus says, take heart. I've overcome the world. But in this world, you will have trouble. Proverbs 22. We just did a series this summer. Proverbs. This is what Proverbs 22, 3 says. It says, a prudent person foresees danger and takes precautions. The simpleton goes blindly on and suffers the consequences. Now, we would sit there and we think, now, who would just blindly go right into something and not think through, you know, some of the options, some of the unexpected things? Who would do that? Us. Because we do it all the time. We tell our kids, color within the lines, and then we just obliterate the lines. And we live our lives and think there's no, no expected things that are going to happen. And so, okay, let me just find, let's do a little survey. How many of you here, being on time is showing up right on time? How many of you live that way? It's okay. We're in church. You can be honest. Let's pray for these people right now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> now, now, how many of you being on time is showing up 15 to 20 minutes early? All right, yeah. These are God's chosen people, all right? I'm <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> uh, but it's just, it's so, I just love the way we're all so different, you know? And, and it's like, you know, even between my wife and I, you know, we always have these little guys like, well, why would I waste 20 minutes when I know I'm going to get there on time? You know, and then there's like, when we, were, we had our missions team meeting over the summer, you know, a couple of them would text, there's a train. Because <laughs> there's these train tracks right down the road off Worsville Road. It's like, yeah. But if you'd have left a little earlier, you would have beat the train or you wouldn't have to worry about the train, right? And so, so it's easy sometimes to not, and then we get stressed out and we get all worked up over all these things and it's just not good for our mind, our body, or the people around us. We need to expect the unexpected. Number four, when it comes to margin, you just need to give yourself buffer space. You have to give yourself buffer space. Because there's always going to be something that's going to be out of control and chaotic. Psalm 127, there's another verse I just love. This. Psalm 127 too says this. It is useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night, anxiously working for food to eat, for God gives rest to his loved ones. And so basically what the psalmist is saying, is just, it's just, it's not, it's useless. It doesn't even make any sense to just live burning yourself out from the time you get up to the time you go to bed. Go, 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 go. It's just useless is what he's saying. Just so we can have all these things that we want. I would rather just do without a lot of things. Just to have a little bit of margin, a little bit of peace of mind, enjoy the relationships that God has given me, then all these things are just going to constantly keep me busy maintaining them right? Give yourself some buffer space. Number five, all right, cut out some activities regularly. Now, this is the hardest part, is cutting things out. And sometimes when it comes to cutting things out, you've got to cut things out that are good things. And sometimes you just have to choose that you're going to cut that thing out. Even when it comes to our kids and their activities, I'm telling you, our kids are worn out. I don't know why culture thinks that we, we have to have them do everything. It's all, I'm telling you, it is all for this entertainment industry that we, we just propagate in our culture. 
We want the best musicians. We want the best athletes. And so we're going to keep them busy all the time. And it's like we have all these feeder programs. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with playing sports or playing an instrument. All right? But we just constantly have to go so we can be the best. Why? Because we're going to go to competition and we want to be number one because there's money behind it all. And all we're teaching our kids is that the only thing that really matters in life is being the best and, and winning. Rather than learning to live this pace of life and trusting God in the midst of it all. And so when our daughter played travel soccer, <laughs> Jack was her coach, <laughs> and we didn't let her play on Sundays. There was a tournament out of town, and she'd go and she'd play Saturday, and we'd bring her home. Now our senior year, whenever we started scouting, there was a couple times we let her do that. One time I went with her, and we actually went to a church in the town that we were in. Because we want our kids to understand that God comes first, no matter what. If you don't make time for God, you will never make time for God. All right, so we've got to understand, we've got to cut some activities out on a regular basis. Let's go back to Ecclesiastes. Solomon writes this. There's a time to search. He's going through all the time for all these things. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to what? Some of you need to clean out your basements. <laughs> and I'm one of them. <laughs> I'm dreading the day when I got to go to my mom and dad's house and clean out their basement because there is so much junk in it. But it's the same way when it comes to our schedule. It's like you can only do so much. And so you got to figure out what, get the big rocks in first and figure out what are the priorities and cut some things out, throw things away that even though they may be good, even though they may be important, they may not be what's most important. All right. First Corinthians 6.12, Paul, the apostle Paul writes this. I love this passage. He says, he says, look, I have the right to do anything, you say. And I was referring to the Old Testament law. We're free from the binding contract of the Old Testament law. Like, we don't have to do all these sacrifices anymore because Jesus became the sacrifice. And so there's all these binding things that, that was like, oh, man, I got to do, 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 according to, to the law. Because the law is all about doing. But in Christ, it's done. What Jesus did for us on the cross, it's done. There's no more working out our salvation. Now there's work we still do because we're called to good works for the kingdom, all right? But, he, but Paul's saying, look, you say this, it's like, I have the right to do anything. Look, I can eat whatever meat that I want. This was often an, an issue in the early church, because some of the meat that they ate was, was offered to butcher shops where that meat was sacrificed to pagan idols. And it was a stumbling block for some people. It's like, look, there's nothing wrong with this meat. It's good, fresh meat. It's like, yeah, you, you're free to do whatever you want with it. But here's what, something you need to understand. I have the right to do anything you say, but not everything is beneficial. It doesn't mean just because you're free to drink that you can drink. Because it might be a stumbling block to somebody else. And it could even cause something in your own life. Okay, so even though you have these freedoms, all right, we need to think through because all things are permissible. Another translation said, but not all things are beneficial. All right, so, so it's not talking about things that are, that are wrong, Sometimes there's good thing. Even the writer of Hebrews, I didn't put this in the note. When you read Hebrews chapter 12, he says, let us lay aside every weight and sin. There's just some things that weigh us down. And it may be a good thing. And sometimes we just have to cut and say, you know what? I just, I just don't have time for this because I need to make time for this other thing that is way more important and higher on the priority list. So we need to cut some things out regularly so we can live with margin. Um, and the sixth thing, last thing, is just to learn from Jesus. How do we learn to live this life within the limits with margin? Is simply to learn from Jesus. Now, how many of you would think that we are better than Jesus? Nobody, right? Let's look what Jesus does, all right? Luke 5, verse 16. And you see this several times in the Gospels. Jesus, what? He often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Jesus intentionally had downtime. He would often, one of his special places was the Mount of Olives. And he would often take the disciples there to get away, to get refreshed, because he was out doing ministry all the time. All right, so he made time to get away, to withdraw to lonely places and prayed. You need to be spending time with God. And if you're not spending time with God, then basically you're saying, you know what? I'm better than Jesus. God the Son made sure he had time. He made time to spend with the Father. So how much more do we need it? All right, 
And so I'm not, I'm not saying that to shame any of us. I'm saying that's, we just have to, you know, it's easy to think. It's like, well, I would never say I'm better than Jesus. But sometimes we live our lives without margin, thinking we can just go and go and go. And Jesus made time to spend time with God the Father. We need it even more. So we need to get those big rocks in our life. Last thing, Matthew 11. This is from the message paraphrase. I just love the way this is worded. We'll close with this. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. He asks a question. This is Jesus, all right? Sermon on the Mount. He's saying, he says, hey, look, are you, are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out? Then come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Now, now he's referring to something beyond just, you know, taking a couple hours to relax. It's connecting with him in a deeper level, being in his word, all right? So I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. And so where it starts is where I'm ending, (laughs) Where it starts in learning to build margin in our lives and living within the limits is by just getting alone with Jesus and spending time and learning from him, which means we got to get into God's word and learn how Jesus did it. In the midst of his crazy schedule where there was constant interruptions, interruptions, he often made time to get away and pray and to rest. And we need it more than he does. All right? And so we're going to just look at a number of different topics throughout this series, but it just really comes down to learning to build margin into our lives. It'll impact every area of our lives. Amen.